Yeah, good evening. It's uh, been, a, been a long day, obviously, and a very exciting day. Really proud of our scouts, coaches, and, and I thought Reggie did a great job pulling the trigger, making some trades uh, last night and today to uh, help us basically get five football players. But uh, I'll answer any questions I can. Yeah, Vic here, just taking us through the, the three guys you got, um, Hall, Parker, and Key. What would you like about each of those three guys? Which three guys? Uh, Hall, Parker, and Key. Uh, Hall is an inside rusher. He's a potential three technique, outside shoulder of the guard. That's uh, a critical part of this defense that we're going to run here uh, with Paul Gunther. We like his production. We love his measurables. The only thing he isn't is he's not tall, but this man is extremely powerful. I think he... Uh, did 38 bench presses, 39 vertical. The man can run. Um, but we need an inside pass rusher. I think I've said that uh, since I've been here. Somebody that can disrupt running plays and, and penetrate. And this guy can do that. So we're really excited to get him. Um, Brandon Parker is another tackle. Um, almost six foot eight. He's a great kid. Uh, really impressed us, his movement skills at the Combine and certainly in the Senior Bowl. You got a huge upside. We feel like uh, Colton Miller and Parker have great mentors in Giacomini and Penn. Uh, so they have a, a tremendous opportunity. And Arden Key can do the one thing that very few people can do in this draft, and that's rush the passer. And we're happy to get him uh, in the third round. John, there's no debating Key's talent, but he certainly had some issues. Uh, is your sense on this that you can just coach these guys, that, that, that at some point you, you let the character questions go because you can handle them? Well, he's not a finished product. He's made some mistakes. He's had some uh, difficult times in his, his young life. And um, I know uh, where he's been for the last several months. I know what he's been through in his career. We've done a lot of research on him. Uh, he has a lot to prove. We have a lot to prove. But at the end of the third round, uh, we feel like it's a, a gamble worth taking, and this young man has some qualities that are rare. And we think he is a very good kid. So uh, I'm not going to get uh, much more into it than that. Uh, I realize we have our skeptics, and rightfully so, but this is a young person that uh, needs some help right now. We're going to help him. Two uh, players taken from, from FCS level in a, in a row what um what do you have to see to know that they can well, ascend you know what uh, jerry uh, we saw Brandon parker at the senior bowl didn't bother him one bit didn't care who he blocked he blocked him he played right tackle left tackle in the all-star classic um i think if you're uh, as productive as pj hall and your measurables are what they are uh believe me we weren't the only team that wanted pj hall i think these two guys are uh, going to be great future Raiders. Uh, they have a passion for football. Uh, we put a Raiders sticker next to them because they have five-star character, great work ethic. Uh, they're going to be finishers. They're going to get better every day. And um, I, I am really happy to add those two men. You know, three trades today, I think, trade yesterday. What's just the energy like in there when these trades are happening? Are yeah, it's you exciting, man. It, it really is. Uh, the trade last night, uh, you know, obviously you trade down to 15. You have four or five names on the board that you're considering. Uh, you, you net a third round pick, which basically turned in to Martavis Bryant, which is a huge addition to this draft class, huge. Um, but it's exciting. It's nerve wracking. I hate it. You're hoping your guy slips. You're hope, hoping your guy falls. Uh, sometimes you get heartbroken. Sometimes you get you get excited, but uh, it's a long day for sure. Michael Gelkin, Las Vegas Review Journal. I know this might be as much of a question for Reggie as you, but the trade, the art of the trade. What goes into deciding when to move back, when to move up? You guys have made a trade before each of your picks. What goes into do we stay put? Do we move up, down? Well, it's it's uh, been said, I think, by both of us that we're going to collaborate on the decisions that are made. And, you know, I, I really give him a lot of credit. He, he fielded phone calls. I fielded phone calls. We exchanged information. And uh, we talked about the consequences of 
not making a trade, talking about the reality of what happens if we do make the trade. There was a good, I think, um, uh, good communication throughout the process. And uh, we did what's best for this football team. And we just got to see what happens when these young men get here. I realize we're going to have our skeptics. We took two guys that were from small colleges, but so was Willie Brown and Art Schell and a lot of Howie Longs and other great players that have come through here. So, you know, we don't discriminate against people just because they didn't play at Notre Dame or USC or in the Pac-12 Pac or SEC. Um, but it was a great effort, I think, by everybody, and, and Reggie deserves a lot of credit. Levi Damian, SB Nation. Uh, how many, which ones of these guys did you go after from the, like, when you came in this draft, you were like, we want this guy, this is where we think we can get him, we're going to go after him at that spot. And which of them, when it came that time, were you just so surprised they were still on the board that you just had to have them? Well, uh, all these five guys were men that, that we targeted. You know, we had a, a list of players that we really liked. Uh, as you get ready to make your pick, you put four or five names up there and you kind of rank them one through four. And if someone calls you, you have to consider, uh, do we move back uh, and pick up a pick because we have needs we feel that we need to address. Uh, but I think all five of the men that we added, including Martavis Bryant, um, were guys that we targeted. We wanted this Pittsburgh Steeler, and we wanted these two tackles, and we wanted this defensive tackle, and we certainly um, wanted to take a look at Arden Key. We're happy he was there at the end of the third round. John, uh, you were a draft analyst yourself not very long ago. Uh, what, what do you think about hearing, you know, you've mentioned the skeptics, and, and maybe this draft hasn't been widely praised. Uh, what do you think about that you, as someone who's sat in the chair? and, and well, I, don't, I don't really hear all the skeptics. I, uh, I, I have a lot of people. My, I have a cell phone, too, that works. I got a lot of coaches and friends in the NFL that are ecstatic about the picks that we made. Um, and I apologize to, to people that don't like our picks and that are skeptical. And I also realize that uh, we have to prove we did the right thing. But uh, I'm not going to apologize or, or, or be sad about taking two young offensive tackles with the people we got to block in this division. We're not playing seven on seven here. You know, we don't get to count steamboats or three Mississippis before they rush. We need guys that can block, and we address that today. And we have a quarterback, I think, that's one hell of a football player, and it's a priority to protect him. He's been hurt the last two years, and it, and it bothers me. Uh, we got a big receiver who can jump up over you and a guy that can run right by you, and he's going to add a dimension to our team that we have not had here. Uh, and, and we needed an inside pass rusher, and we needed an edge rusher. A uh, third rusher, potentially, with Bruce Irvin and Khalil Mack. And um, we got to prove we did well, but with every pick come skeptics. Coach, Kyle Martin, Raiders.com. Obviously, to that point, there's a lot of pass rushers in the division that are going to cause some problems. So fortifying the trenches is a priority. What importance or do guys like Colton Miller and or, uh, Brandon Parker do differently that you're going to add to the group? Well, they're young players. You know, obviously, Brandon comes from North Carolina A&T and uh, hasn't seen a, a, the high level of competition that he's going to see when he gets here. Colt Miller is an underclassman, uh, so we have a maturation that has to take place, obviously. But like I said, we have, I think, very good mentors in place with Donald Penn and uh, Breno Giacomini. I think we have one of the best line coaches in football. Um, Look, I've, I've gone around this league as a broadcaster. You cannot call plays without offensive tackles. You can't do it. And we need depth, and we got to be better on the edge. Without Donald Penn last year and with issues at right tackle, we struggled to score in the last four games. We just had a two-day minicamp. We felt it was a priority, and we're happy with how we addressed it. Kind of along the same lines since last April, and I realize this is before your time to some degree, um, the team drafted an offensive tackle in the fourth round and the seventh round. It extended Donald. It you know, with Giacomini was signed, first round pick, a third round pick, all on offensive tackle. How do you sort this out now with the bodies in place to figure out who are your guys that you're going to trust moving forward? To, as you referenced, the important assignment of protecting Derek Carr. Well, we had, we, you're right. We did draft the fourth rounder. We did draft the seventh rounder. And so did a lot of teams in the NFL. It doesn't matter what round, uh, what players are here. We've, we've got to play better. We've got to be better on the edge. We have competition. We have some depth. Uh, and you need versatility. 
you need guys that can swing and play left and right because men get hurt in this league. Um, it's a 16-week grind. So I'm not going to sit here and put forth a depth chart today, but in the coming weeks we will. But uh, we certainly needed these two big, big offensive tackles. And when you see them, they are big guys, great guys too. No, you said you felt fortunate. Arden was there at 87. Some guys on the TV were saying he's a first-round talent. On talent alone, where do you think he falls? Don't listen to everybody on TV, trust me, <laughs> just so you know. I mean, some of the critics on TV, I was one of them. Uh, you don't want to listen to those critics all the time. Um, you know, like I said, two years ago, two years ago, his tape was unbelievable. He was a, he was a heck of a football player. He gained 25 or 26 pounds. He bulked up. I think he tried to uh, add a, a different dimension to his game size-wise. Perhaps it backfired. He got hurt. And there were issues there, okay? He underachieved this year. But I go back to the film two years ago. The kid is special. And I know the man that's been training him. I got a lot of confidence in Paul Gunther and Mike Turgovac. They've done this a long time. They've developed players like this. Um, I'm not going to make any other predictions than, um, than that. He is, he is a talented kid. I believe he's at the right place at the right time. This is a great day for him, and, and, and I think he, he would agree with that. Scott Winter, uh, Silver and Black today. Uh, you obviously wanted to address the trenches, and you really went out and did that. What made you feel like you had to trade up both to get uh, uh, Hall and uh, Parker? Yeah, I didn't want to lose them. Didn't want to lose them. You know, you go in a free agency um, to make um, additions to your team, and linemen don't get there. They just don't get there. You can oftentimes find a cornerback. You can find a linebacker. A lot of those guys at those positions get there. But uh, big offensive tackles, uh, quality defensive edge rushers, they don't make it the free agency. You have to be able to draft these guys. You have to be able to develop these players. And um, I really felt a big area on this team was, was the edge rush. When Khalil got tired last year, who's the third rusher? You know, who do we put in? When Bruce got tired, who's the third rusher? You got to have at least three guys that can get after the quarterback because you win games with your fourth quarter pass rush. You work 57 minutes to get a lead, and your, your fourth quarter pass rush has to close the door down. So we think Key can be one of those guys at the end of games. We think P.J. Hall can give us an inside rush that we have not had, did not want to lose him. And uh, to find two quality young people that are massive and athletic, did not want to lose them, and we didn't. Two more questions, guys. Okay. Jerry, Michael. You, uh, you talked about the, the tradition here of, of, of taking guys in the past from small colleges and some of the great names that have been in this franchise. And, and also there's a long tradition here of second chances and clean slates. So is this kind of a vintage Raiders draft up till now? <laughs> yeah, my mom called me. She said that uh, maybe Mr. Davis was, was calling a picks down from heaven, you know. Uh, uh, but it's a philosophy that I have. It's a philosophy that I learned here. You know, we, bigger guys can be, can be a, a good thing. Faster can be better. We feel like we added one of the fastest receivers in all of football today. Uh, and Martavis Bryant, two really uh, outstanding, young, massive tackles that can pull, that can pass protect, uh, that can continue to get better, that'll fight, uh, that'll take us to another level of execution an inside rusher and an edge rusher. And that's all we did today is add five young uh, players that we think can be dynamic. And uh, that's just a prediction right now, but uh, I, I feel good about it. You've touched upon the 2006 film for Key and what he showed on film. You've also been very clear about what you think of your strength and conditioning staff and all the trust you have in Tom Shaw, not only him, but all of his assistants that he brought in. That marriage between Key and getting him right physically and the faith that you have in your strength staff, is that the marriage that you had in mind with that pick as, boy, yeah, we have yeah. the people in place who can really make the most of his ability? Pretty much. I mean, that's, that's, that's how it goes. The development of a football player starts downstairs, and uh, even a guy, Martavis Bryant, has a history with Tom Shaw. You know, if you're a fast guy, you know Tom Shaw. Uh, a lot of our players, I think, uh, if you talk to them, I think they're impressed with Shaw and his staff and the, the direction that we're going. Uh, obviously, we had a mini camp, two days, three practices, four practices prior to the draft to learn about what we have and what we need. And uh, here we go. We got some more picks tomorrow. Um, 
and uh, we're, we're fired up at the beginning. I thought Reggie did a good job, and I thought we, we worked well together, and uh, there were some tense moments. And it's not easy working with me. I'll be honest. I'm a pain in the ass up there. But um, I, I'm really happy with what we got done here the first two days. Okay, thank you guys. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.